Yo, 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 what's going on guys? Reese here from Stoic Pool, and that's actually the last time I'm going to introduce myself because you know who I am by now. In this video, this is video three of the introduction to Aiken, so the start of the Aiken course empowered by the Cardano Foundation. And in this video, we're going to be having a look at the very basics of validators. We're going to be making always succeeds validators, but while we do this, we're going to be having a look at how to set up validators and how to start writing validators in Aiken. So let's get into it. Okay, so if we switch to VS Code, in our course uh, project folder, we're gonna, you can see we've got our build, we've got a lib. Lib is where we put all of our external modules. So like if we make like a test module, some types or some like helper functions or whatever, that's where that's gonna go. And in validators is obviously where we write our validator code. So in validators, we're gonna make a file and we're gonna call it always.ak. And in always.ak, we're going to start writing our first validators. Always it references always succeeds validators. So basically, they're going to be like nothing validators. No matter what, they're always going to pass. All right, which is not really what you want from validators. Validators are essentially logic gates. And so they look at the state of a transaction. And based on the script purpose, the purpose of that script, uh, it's going to say, according to the logic, does this satisfy all the validation requirements? And if so, it'll pass. And if not, it will fail. So it's good just to think of validators like logic gates. In our always.ak file, we're going to write our first always validator. And we're going to have a look at uh, Mint. So Mint is one of the script purposes that we can use. There are several different types of script purposes, so different, different kinds of validation, essentially. Mint is for minting and burning tokens. If we take a little look at the documentation for Aiken and we go down to validators in the language tour, you can see here that there are several different script purposes that we can use. So Mint is the one we're going for first, which does minting and burning of assets. We got spend for spending transactions. Uh, like spending transactions from or UTXOs from the spend validator, like the validator address. We also have withdrawal for withdrawing staking rewards, publishing for publishing delegation certificates, uh, voting, which is new for Plutus V3 for governance proposals, and propose, also new for PV3 for uh, submitting proposals, basically. So back to VS Code, we're going to write our first validator. We're going to write validator always. And then we're going to open up some curly braces and in there we're going to write mint. So mint is our script purpose. So if we had say spend, we'll do spend or in this case mint, we'll use mint. Mint takes a redeemer. It takes a uh, minting policy, which is the policy of the validator, which is going to be a script hash essentially and a transaction and it will return a bool. Remember that validators are just logic gates, so they'll always return a bool. They'll either return true or false. And we're just going to put true in here. And then we're also going to do spend. Now, the spend purpose takes a datum or an optional datum because it doesn't have to have one. So we'll do D for option datum, R for a redeemer, O ref, which is an output reference, which is what the uh, validator is trying to spend, right? The output reference of the transaction the validator is trying to spend and the transaction. And again, it's going to return a bool and we're just going to write true. But actually, with this optional datum, we want to make sure that we can handle the datum. So when we have options, the way that we escape an option is we use expect. And so we expect some datum because we expect there to be a datum. So we'll expect some datum uh, equals D. And now we can act as though that datum always exists. Now, we're not really going to worry about that. I'm going to get into that in more detail later. But for right now, just know that we can basically deal with if there's a datum, if there's a datum of the right type, and if there's no datum. So just bear with me, all right? I'm just explaining this very quickly so that we can move on to the important stuff, but we're gonna go through this in a lot more detail when we're writing real validators. Uh, so I'll just get rid of that now and write true. And if we want to ignore stuff, like we just wanna discard things in Aiken, we just prefix that variable with an underscore. So I'm gonna underscore that datum, I'm gonna underscore the redeemer and, uh, and the oref, and above, I'm gonna do the same with the redeemer and the policy ID. Uh, we can do all kinds of stuff with Aiken language, but right now what we're gonna say is when the D exists, so when D is, and then we essentially have like, a switch statement. So if there is some datum, we're going to return true. And if there's no datum, we're going to return false. And then to expand on that, we can say we can 
add some curly braces, we can say to do and at validation incoming. Okay, and that's just a trace. Don't worry about that too much. Again, we're going to cover that in a lot more detail later. Now to import modules, we just go to the top of our file and we say use. In this case, we're going to be using policy ID. So we just say use Cardano slash assets. And then we can either have named imports or unnamed imports. So in this case, I like to export, uh, sorry, explicitly import types because this is quite neat rather than having to prefix everything. Uh, but for functions, generally I'll prefix it with the module name so that you always know where or like what the function is using. Like if it's a list or a dict, sometimes the function names are the same and it can be confusing. So it's just better, in my opinion, to do it this way. So that's what I'm going to be doing through the course. So we're going to import this policy ID. We're also going to use Cardano transaction and we're going to import a datum output reference transaction and redeemer type. And then we save that file. You'll see at the bottom of the file, we also have this else. And what we're essentially doing is having an always fail, like an automatic out if the script purpose doesn't match either of these functions. So in this validator, we have a mint and a spend um, case essentially for the different script purposes. But if we try to withdraw, then it will just fail straight away. And else doesn't care what it is you're trying to do. If it's not the functions that have been specified by the validators, it will fail straight away. Okay, so we're going to save this and we're going to switch to our CLI and we're going to run Aiken check and you see it gives us an error for this transaction and it's actually just because I misspelled it. So I'm going to switch on here and fix that and then we can run Aiken check again and you'll see I have zero errors and four warnings. The warnings are because we're not doing anything with any of the types right now. So don't worry about it too much, but just this is the kind of feedback that you get from the CLI. And you can see here that your it actually tells you, it gives you hints, that really, really good information on how to deal with things. Like if you want to discard it, underscore, if you want to discard it, but have side effects, use expect and other helpful hints to help make it easier for you to write validators. Really, really cool stuff from the TX Pike team. Cool. So I'm just going to underscore those transactions. We're going to get rid of this other information. I'm just going to return true. And then you'll see when I run Aiken check again, it gives me another warning. And that's because we don't do anything with our sum datum case, like if there's a datum there. So like, don't worry about that too much. We're just going to discard it. And then when we uh, run a can check again. You'll see I've got zero errors and zero warnings. Now there are other kinds of validators as well. So we're going to have a little look at those two. So we're going to write validator always W for always withdraw. And we're going to have our withdraw purpose and it's got an R for a redeemer, C for a credential and a transaction. And it's going to return a bool. And in this, we're going to just return true again, because I'm not, we're not going to be de doing anything with these things. So just have a little look at that. Make sure we in uh, import the credential from Cardano slash address. And then that's good. Cool. So now we're going to have a little look at something where we actually do a level of validation. It's just a completely just a toy validator. So we can have a look at how functions and stuff work in Aiken. Uh, so we're going to create a new validator called vesting tokens or called vesting. And we're going to start with a minting policy, but this is going to be a multi validator. It's going to have a mint purpose and a spend purpose. So we're going to create our mint purpose first. Mint takes a redeemer, a policy ID, which is the script hash of the validator and the transaction, and it'll return a bool. And we can actually expand the fields in transaction. If we just want to access certain points, then we can do that. So we're going to do that. We're going to say let transaction curly braces outputs, because we're only going to worry about the outputs in this case, and then dot dot afterwards, which is like, and the rest essentially. And we're going to make that equal to the transaction, which we're taking as an argument. What we want to do is we want to allow minting only if those tokens are then sent to our own validator address. And we can do this very easily in a validator because the policy ID of the validator or the policy ID of the assets that that validator mints is the same as the script hash and the address or the payment credential of a validator if we're spending is also the script hash. So we can kind of compare those values. And if there's an output that sends all the tokens to that um, cr uh, that payment credential, to that hash, then we know that we're sending them to our own script address. So this is basically what we're going to be doing. So we first need to find in the list of outputs if there is a, a UTXO, an output that's being sent to our own script hash. And we can do that with our policy ID. 
So we're going to say we're going to use a function called list.find. And if we go to the standard library and go on the list module, you'll see in the side under inspecting, there's a find. You click on find and you'll say find takes a list and it applies that list to a function, which will return a bool. And as soon as any of those passes, we only need to find one. So finding will always return a single element of that list. It'll be the first element it finds and it returns that as an option element. So in our case, it'll be an output. So it'll return an option output because the reason it returns an option is because it might not find them, right? So there might not be one of those outputs that we are looking for in our function. So that's why. And you can see in this example below, list.find is looking for a two. There is a two in one, two, three. So it returns some two. And in 456, there's no two, so it returns none. And that's why we need to handle options, all right? Optional outputs. So back to our validator, we're going to say let own out, which we'll just naming our own output, is equal to a list.find. We're going to stick the outputs in as our uh, list. And then we're going to apply a function which takes an output and it searches for a particular script credential. So we're going to say, that the output.address.payment credential is equal to a script that matches the policy ID. That policy ID is it, because it's just the script hash of the validator is also the same as the payment credential of that validator. So we can just use that as like a script with the P as the argument there. So it's going to check for a script credential of P which is our policy ID. And then we can also do our spending validator underneath. So spend takes an optional datum. It takes a redeemer and it takes an output reference with a transaction. And remember that output reference is the transaction at the script address that we're trying to spend. That's also going to return a bool and we're just going to return true because it doesn't really matter in this case. Now we're going to just discard everything. So we're going to underscore everything and just make sure that that runs. You can check. Um, and you'll see that our own out is actually a problem, right? Because it's it's saying that the output might be an optional output. So instead of saying let own out, we've got to handle the option. So we do that with expect. We're going to say expect some own output. And we're just going to discard it straight away because this is a toy validator. We just don't care. Then we can run egg and check and that passes and then we can run a can build and we will have our new validator compiled in a plutus.json file in the root folder of our project so if we take a little look at that the plutus.json you can see here we've got a little bit of preamble which we don't really care about it's just information about the project then we've got validators and we've got definitions the validators is really what we care about and we've got our always.always .always mint We've got always.always .always spend. We'll show the datum shape and the redeemer shape, the different types that we expect. And it'll also have our compiled code and it'll have our script hash, that elusive hash that I've been talking about. And you'll see that these two script hashes match because the minting purpose and the spend purpose are all in the same validator. So the script hashes always match. And that's really useful for when you're having multiple different purposes available in a validator because we can do things like we were doing where we use the policy ID as a verification, oh, as a credential um, check to make sure that we're sending to the right place. Okay, so that's it for this video. If any of this has gone over your head or I've kind of brushed over stuff super quick, don't worry too much, okay? Because we're going to go into a lot more detail throughout the rest of the course. So again, we're going to start with really, really simple stuff. There's going to be a lot less validators than what we've gone through right now for the next module. Uh, but in the next module, we'll be looking at a single validator. It's going to be a marketplace. And this is basically going to be the, the starting point for the rest of the course. So familiar, 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 familiar familiarize yourself with the syntax like just get a little bit of use to looking and to switching to the cli to run egg and check and testing your validators and stuff make sure you got everything imported you need to you can check out all of the code at the link below that'll take you to the github repo um yeah just take your time look through it read through the documentation and when you're ready i'll see you in the next module